brave new world of uh, startups. Who cares? I'm a PhD in physics. Just study computer science. They will need computers everywhere. So my name is Claudia Perlich. Um, I'm right now a senior data scientist at a New York-based hedge fund called Two Sigma. Before that, for eight years, I acted as the chief scientist of a ad tech uh, startup out of New York and basically was in charge of all of their machine learning uh, scaling. So that's what I do today, but um, how did I get here? Um, so I grew up in East Germany, and when I was 18 trying to figure out what to do with my life, the only thing I knew is I was good at math, I really like biology, but all the biology jobs seem to be kind of weird. And so my dad said, just study computer science. They will need computers everywhere. So that's how I ended up uh, signing up for computer science. Um, and then in 1995, I entered an exchange program and I went to Boulder, Colorado. And by accident, walked into a course called Artificial Neural Networks. And since I really liked biology, I said, oh, okay, I have to take this. And so that was my first machine learning course, and I just fell in love with data because you could learn so much about the world without really having to talk to people, but just kind of look how they behave. And for the introverted me at the time, that was a great um, eye-opener, really. So after I graduated, um, I went uh, back to Germany, finished my degree there, and my philosophy was, I mean, I really love studying. I really like being at the university and learning new stuff. So I had absolutely no desire to yet yeah, start working at that point, and I was looking for a PhD program. And I asked the professor who taught this course on artificial neural networks for a recommendation letter. And he sent me one and said, fine, but why don't you apply here? Here was a business school in New York City. And I told him, look, I have no idea about business. I mean, I'm a computer scientist. And he said, who cares? I'm a PhD in physics. So long story short, he had gotten a uh, professorship uh, at Stern NYU in the meanwhile. And so I spent the next six years getting a PhD. At some point, you can't really avoid working any longer. So um, I went uh, into uh, the IBM Research Lab at uh, TJ Watson. And uh, there, I was very much working on applied machine learning uh, problems, both inside the company as well as outside. I published a lot of papers. Um, and my kind of, I'm infamous for uh, having won three KDD Cups in a row from 2007 through nine. Um, that was mostly for fun, and that's very different from uh, Kaggle competitions today. So just, um, and then in 2010, I was approached by a very young startup, and so that's where my transition into the uh, brave new world of uh, startups and building teams from scratch and being responsibility for, for products uh, uh, started. Um, I spent eight years there. Um, at that point, I also then became more well-known in the industry. I gave more talks, so uh, I enjoy that role uh, a lot, and I do a lot of those now. Um, and I also picked up teaching, so I'm back to the university, at least part-time now, as an adjunct uh, professor. And aside from that, I like diversity in terms of, I'm getting bored doing the same thing for too long. So um, I work with groups like Data Kind or Data and Society or AI, AI Now um, on, on different projects that really have more impact outside of my primary day job. Some of my most uh, favorite projects, let me talk about advertising because we all kind of know advertising, we're all annoyed with it. You, you look at a pair of shoes and then they follow you around for the next uh, three weeks, although you already bought them or maybe you decided you didn't want them after all. So why did I join advertising of all things? And it's really a, a sandbox for data science. There's so much exciting different stuff you can do and learn how machine learning really works in the real world. So for instance, what you may not know, when a page loads and you see these ads, almost all of them today were just auctioned off in real time. So they're on the order of about 100 billion auctions every day where these ads are bought and sold. Now, our company, Distillery, 
basically participated in these auctions. So a brand would come to us, would give us money and say, hey, we want you to run this campaign and we want to reach people who then actually come back to our homepage and sign up for a service or buy this thing or whatever it is that, that they wanted us to do. And then of course, for me, that's a machine learning problem right there because all you need to do, you need to find those people who are actually going to do that. Let's say I'm trying to advertise a new phone. I mean, all buying new phones, right? But how do I know that you are going to buy a new phone in the next month? Well, either because you were chatting with your friends or tweeting about it, or maybe because you start looking around at different models. So we all constantly leave traces of consuming information about the things we might want to buy in the future, or maybe it's our friends telling us about it, or maybe it's you physically going to a location. And so advertising takes all of these information and then builds predictive models to give everybody a score of how likely they are to be interested in that product. And that then determines what you will see on that page as it loads in an auction. Let's look at the, what advice I would have for high school students. I mean, I don't think that the demand for data science will go away. It's here to stay and every panel we have on the topic, industry says they need more data scientists and I don't think it's a fad that uh, will be gone in five years. The question is whether that's something you want to do. And what I like about it I have had the pleasure of working with so many data sets and learning so much about so many different things. At some point I was building a model to predict breast cancer based on fMRI images. In another project I was given genetic data to predict what a particular gene of the yeast genome was going to do. I've worked in advertising, right now I'm working in finance. So if you don't really know what you want to do, there will be data in every single domain and they will need skills from people who can deal with data in all of those domains. So the question is, is this something that appeals to you? Because you need to want to work with data. You need to want to explore it. There has to be some curiosity about really getting to the bottom of it. And alongside with it, a healthy amount of skepticism. So if you're happy with the first and easy answer, it's probably not for you because often the first three results you get are wrong or questionable. So this is really a personality trait in terms of character. But again, I think the opportunities afterwards are immense. What's data science going to be in five years? I have no idea. I am spending far too much time of my life trying to predict things to even venture a guess here. My expectation would be that we will see a lot more because yes, there are these hyped algorithms that we have right now. Everybody is talking about deep learning and AI and that will continue. But I think the kind of basic skill sets of how to look at data, how to clean it, how to understand it, how to then kind of put it into the perspective of what you're really trying to do. And often starting with a very simple model and see how far you can get with that before kind of shooting at it with the big cannon of deep learning. So I think a lot of the traditional algorithms that uh, we all have used for the last five, 10 years will stay around and you don't necessarily have to be on the kind of top notch of research, especially in industry, you often favor more robust solutions that are easy to maintain over the cutting edge.